Hello and welcome to this Tinkercad tutorial. Today I will be showing you how to make a cute articulating animal in Tinkercad for 3D printing specifically. So I do a lot of cute animals and dragons and stuff like that and a lot of people has, have asked me how to do an articulated design in Tinkercad specific. So here we go. I just logged into Tinkercad. It's just tinkercad.com and then you log in either with your Gmail or whichever you prefer. And then you get in and you can create a file or blank canvas and this is where we start. We have a standard size work plane. So first thing I always do is start with the head. When I have the head I can create everything else. So I will start by taking a sphere and pulling it into the work plane. You can either just tap or you can drag it over here. <laughs> and if you have uh, if you're using a mouse, you can uh, scroll in and out on your subject or your sphere here. Now I always go over here right away and give us as many steps as possible so it's more even like this. You can also instead of taking this one you can take a high resolution sphere, sphere uh, and use that for your base. You just write over here and the yellow one is a high res. So let's take a look. So the difference between this one and this one is how many uh, pixels or spheres, uh, sphere points you have. If you look at this now, you can see the little squares it's made of. And over here, it, in the high resolution, you have the triangles and you can actually add, um, that was the wrong one. You can add the to the resolution so you get even more of these little squares or triangles so you have a finer mesh i prefer the yellow one so that's the one i usually work with so i want to make a baby hippo this time and i'm going to just start by giving it a purplish color and making this piece a little bigger now this is going to be the base for the head and I'm just going to take this sphere and I'm going to control C and control V to copy it so you get an exact copy of it. And then I'm going to make this one smaller because we are now making the snout. So I think maybe just a tad smaller like that. And now these are not aligned so these look crooked. I want them to be in a straight line. So you can drag your mouse over while holding down the mouse button and you can mark both spheres and then you have this icon up here that's called a line. So if you press that you can use it to actually set the two spheres in a line. So just press the middle one here and now they are perfectly aligned. Now I'm not satisfied with the placement of this, so I want it to be a bit further up. So I am going to just mark that sphere and drag it up a bit. Like so. Maybe I think we will make it a tad smaller again. It's a lot about seeing what you want from your animal. Or whatever you're making just to feel your way around how it should look and what you want it to be now this is good I like this so I'm going to go ahead and mark them both and then I am going to group them together like so so now this is one part instead of two separate parts now the next thing I would do is actually go in and make it flat at the bottom because for 3D printing you need it to be flat. So I'm just going to take a box that is transparent 
and I am going to make it a bit bigger by pulling these or you can pull the corners which make it makes it a uniform scale but I like to keep it in the same height because it's 20 and then I'm going to go ahead and pull this one down and then out here where it says minus 1 now I'm going to say minus 20 because now it is actually aligned with the plane that we're working on so everything that comes beneath the plane you can edit away so I'm going to take this one and I'm just going to lower it into the bottom plane like so and as you can see now it will be cutting off the bottom part so you just mark the two things and you're going to group them again and voila now you have a flat head that can actually be printed like so so for the next part i want to put in some eyes and i'm just going to take the normal sphere for this set it up to 24 and then i'm going to mark it and you can hold down your shift button on your keyboard and it would uniform scale this if you just do this without holding shift down you can make it all kinds of sizes and they're not uniform as you can see so if you hold shift down and pull on this you get a uniform scale so I'm just going to make this black because I want the eyes to be black so I'm going to bring going to bring the spear sphere over here, not the spear, the sphere. <laughs> uh, and I am going to resize it till I like the size. Now, if you want to, you can make the eyes more flat, or you can have them protruding out. That's up to you. I like to just make it like so, and then angle it, and play around with these angles to see what fits best, best and sort of make it align with the head a little bit more. Now like that. So for the next thing we need a copy of this over on the other side so I'm doing I'm just going to control C and then control V and then you have this tool up here that's called mirror. If you press that and you press this little one it's going to mirror on that axis and that does so that the eye looks exactly like the other one just mirrored and then with your keys you can just go ahead and bring it over now sometimes it can be hard to actually align it correctly so i usually mark these eyes both and i group them together and then i go ahead and mark everything and I use the align tool to make sure that it's in the middle, like so. There we go. So the next thing I want is nostrils for this little guy. So I'm going to go ahead and pull in another sphere. And I am going to make it 24 and make it smaller. And I am going to use this as a negative, as a whole, so we are going to press this one. And we're going to bring it up. And the good thing with Tinkercad is that you can see when it goes into something and you can get an idea of what will look like, how is it placed, like so. And of course I'm going to copy it and bring the next one over to the other side. I'm going to group those two together and I am going to align them with the whole thing so we have it all like this. And then you can take this one and the head and you can group those two. Now we have a basic shape of the head and we are going to need some little ears for this one. So let's do another sphere and I want this one to be flat. So 24 in the steps and then we're going to flatten it out like this 
and we are just going to pull it in like this and I change directions of my view screen a lot so I can see what's going on on all sides. Now I want the ear to be hollowed out a bit so I am going to copy this one and put it in a new one and I am going to mark them both and align them in the middle and then I'm going to take one and make it a hole and I'm going to bring it out by doing the, yeah, by just tapping the arrow keys. Sorry, my words are not good today. <laughs> and then I am going to make a negative space inside the ear to just sort of give it a form or shape like this. There, I am going to align them again. And you can see if it is grayed out like this. That means they are still aligned. If it, this one is black, then it's not aligned like this or this. And it'll even show you what it does if you click those. But yeah, now we have this. So I marked both and we grouped them together. Now we have something shaped like an ear. Now I'm going to take this and do the same color as the rest. And I am probably going to bring this down in size, so I'm going to press my shift and press this one and bring it down in size. And then I am going to place it where I want the little ear. Now a hippo's ear does not go up, it goes to the side a bit. It actually goes straight out to the side on both, but we have to think about this being a 3D print. so. We can't have too big of a, um, ah, what's it called? <laughs> yeah, of an angle, because you can't print at too steep angles. So something like this is really doable for the printer. But if you were to do it like this, you would have some overhang issues here, and that would not be good. So let's do this. And then, of course, we are going to copy it and control V. And we are going to use the mirror tool and the little arrow here to bring it over to the right size. And we are also going to use the arrow keys to just place it sort of where we think it is equal. And then, of course, mark both ears, group them together, mark the whole thing and align them like so now we have a basic hippo head now what i like to do is start messing around with um, making a hollow space on the back for the articulating parts so we are going to bring in another sphere make it 24 and this one needs to be hollow and then we are going to sort of bring it into the head and see what size and everything we need. So I'm going to bring it down a bit into this and I am going to shift and click the bottom part here and just make it a bit bigger. Now when I like where it's placed, I am going to mark the whole thing and align it again. Now this looks fine, so I'm going to mark the head part and the hollow sphere, and then we're going to group them together like so. <clears throat> so now you have a hollowed out space here where you will have your articulating parts working inside of it. Now what I like to do is actually bring down the, the edge in Tinkercad here too, so I'm going to take a box that is hollow and I'm just going to set it on the edge here and I'm going to make it a bit higher and pull this one to make it longer. So you can see it just sort of cuts off that edge so it's not that sharp. This will make it even uh, better printing like so. Don't want two sharp edges that we can cut ourselves on after printing. So 
for the first part of the articulation, I am going to show you how to easily make articulating joints. So we're going to go down here to this torus or donut, and we are going to make it up to 24 in size and also in the steps. And this is the first part of articulated joint. So what I usually do is I start by angling it this way. Again, we have to think about the overhangs and stuff like that for 3D printing. And if you have it too shallow um, at the angle here, you won't be able to print it that well. So a bit of an overhang is okay. This would be better, but still I know my printers can print at this overhang right here. So I just brought it up a bit from the yeah the work plane. Words fail me today, sorry guys. <laughs> and then I'm going to take another sphere or torus, and I'm going to do the same 24 steps and 24 sides. And this one, I'm just going to take this turn key here and make it a 90 degree angle. Now we need a full torus uh, part that is standing up like this, but we need a part down here that's sort of flat for it to better print, because if you have it printing like this, you have a very small base to start from, and the printer will probably tilt over this part really easy. So I'm bringing it down just to into the work plane and I'm going to take a box and this box I'm just going to place over this and with this one we are going to just set it to minus one and go down here and say minus 20 so everything outside of the canvas or the work plane will get cut away so mark those two group them together and now you have a flat even space for the printer to actually work with now what we need is for these two not to touch. So usually I make one of them hollow now. So you can see the dark parts here where they are touching. We won't we don't want any dark parts at all between this torus and this one. So I'm going to bring it inside here and we are going to play around with putting it where we need it. First of all, I'm just going to mark it and I am going to align them so like this and you can see this one the blue one is too high up so it's touching up here we do not want that so we're going to bring it down a bit and test out to see as you can see it is actually not touching up here but we want a bit more free space here so I'm going to take the angle of this blue torus and just bring it down just a bit, just five degrees like this. And now there is no place that these two, these two are touching. You have a good free space to move around uh, the joint and these will print well as is. So now this one is going to make solid. And what I usually do is mark both of these and group them together so I don't accidentally move one out of alignment with the other. So now I can bring these into my head of the hippo and I will also align these together like so. Now I'm going to make the hippo head hollow so we can see. Now this part is going to be attached to the body and this one is going to be attached to the head. So this part up here, the one standing up, is not allowed to touch anything in the head. But this one lying down is okay. So we can, with the arrow key, just move it in like so. And it is very important that this one does not touch the head part. So you can go into this and say one millimeter and you can sort of bring it out a bit like so.